Hi everyone, welcome back. Today we're doing another speed reviews video. I did my first one of these about a month ago and I wanted to do an updated one because I have tried out quite a few new products in the past few weeks and I wanted to kind of update you guys on all of my thoughts and if I recommend them or if I don't. If you're new here, my name is Blair. I do all kinds of makeup content here on YouTube every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I love talking about high-end and drugstore products. So if you're interested in those types of videos, I would love to see you again. I hope you'll subscribe and let's go ahead and get into the speed reviews. All right, we're going to go ahead and get started. I did want to start this video by saying thank you so much to all of the sweet comments that I got on my video yesterday. I have not been feeling very good and today I woke up and I felt so much better and I'm so grateful. So I definitely felt like I could absolutely film today so that's that always makes me so happy so I just wanted to thank you for all of your sweet kind words I really appreciate it so we're gonna start out with two eyeshadow palettes these are I guess the newest palettes to my collection that you guys have seen me use I actually have a few new ones that I haven't even filmed with yet but the two palettes that I've used most recently are the Sigma and Cinderella eyeshadow palette. I did a video of this and used it to create three different looks with this palette. And then the other one is the Charlotte Tilbury Smoky Eyes Instant Eye Palette. So this is her new palette for the holidays this year. Um, but I wanted to start out with the Cinderella palette. That is what I have on my eyes today. I think it was pretty clear in my Sigma <laughs> Cinderella video that I absolutely love this palette. I don't know, I don't even know how to describe how much I love it because I just, I don't know. I can't put into words how much I love this palette. I love every single color in here. I love how versatile it is. You get some color, but you can also do a pretty neutral I look with it as well. You get a really good mix of matte shades and shimmer shades in here. This is a stunning palette. Not only do I love it because I love Cinderella. Cinderella is my favorite Disney princess. She always has been. But this palette was even better in person when I got it. I mean, honestly, I love this so much. I see this being in my eyeshadow palette collection for a very, very, very long time. Today I use quite a few of the shades. My favorite shade in this palette is this shade. I think it's Courtyard. Yeah, Courtyard. So Courtyard is a matte kind of foresty green and that's what I have on uh, my outer corner today. But this color, you guys, I mean, if you like true deep greens, you will love that color. I have that in my outer corner, and then I have the uh, kind of warm brown up here called Pumpkin in my crease. I have Dressmaker and uh, Charming on my lids and then I used the black and kind of smudged it along my lash line and that's what I did today. But in my video, if you haven't seen it, I'll link it above for you. I did other looks and used all of the colors in here. But honestly, I can confidently say this is one of my favorite palettes that I own out of all of them. I love it that much and I can't recommend it enough. It's still in stock on Sigma the last time I checked. You also get this brush that comes with it with a really good um, crease brush and a kind of a lid shader brush over here. 12 out of 10 for this palette. Love it so very much. And then the other one, like I said, is the Charlotte Tilbury Smoky Eye Palette. This is her holiday palette for 2021 and again y'all know if you're if you're not new here you know how much I love Charlotte Tilbury and this palette did not disappoint me again my favorites are these greens here 
but I'll swatch for you. I have done a video already on this palette that I can link for you. So those are the two greens right there. Amazing, amazing quality on this palette. I also love that you get these two matte shades, a matte brown and a matte black. I feel like this palette is pretty versatile in terms of you can get something pretty neutral with this, with these lighter shades and even like this transitional type shade right here, or you can really get something smoky with these darker shades up here. If I had to choose between the two, believe it or not, I would choose Sigma. Just, I don't know, something about this just, I just love it. I don't know what else to say, but I guarantee you if you get it, you will love it. I think this is stunning. I love it so much, but I also love Charlotte Tilbury. So I would recommend both. Uh, but if I had to pick, I would go with Sigma. One other little eyeshadow palette, I forgot I didn't bring it over here, is the new Essence Dancing Greens palette. This is also very good. These are $3.99. $3.99, so $4. And for $4, this is a great green palette. So if you love greens, but you don't want to spend the money on something more expensive, because greens... I kind of consider greens a neutral, but I know not everyone does. So if you don't want to spend the money on a really expensive palette with greens in it, this is very good. Not, in my opinion, the easiest in terms of blendability, but you can work with it. You just have to, you have to blend them. I mean, they're not, they don't blend themselves, but they're very good. Like this is the matte green here. Swatches very well. This is the matte kind of taupey brown. Very, very good. For the price, I'm amazed by this. So if you are inter interested in these Essence palettes, this is the only one I've tried so far. I did get uh, the other one. I think it's called Bronzed this way. I did buy that. I haven't used it yet, though. But this is very good. Definitely recommend it. Okay, let's move on to some complexion products. I've tried quite a few new things in the last few weeks. And the first one I have on my face today, most of these things I do have on my face today, um, but it's the MAC Face and Body. So this is the new Studio Radiance version. I don't know if it actually is new or not. I've seen both things, that this is the same as the old formula, and then I've seen people say it's not the same as the old formula, so I'm not sure, but I used this in a video, and I kind of talked about, I had this a few years ago in a shade that was way too dark and way too warm for me, and I didn't like it, but I couldn't really say why I didn't like it, other than the color was wrong, and it didn't have a lot of coverage, but I now realize that I was not applying this foundation the correct way, which is to use your hands. And I kind of didn't believe that when I saw so many people saying that. I, I thought, you know, I don't use my hands for foundation. I'm not going to like that. But truly, this works the best 100% with your hands. You have to actually warm it up, rub it between your hands, and let it get that tacky texture that it gets and that's where that beautiful skin like finish comes from and it it actually is very skin like it does not look like makeup I would say it can be a light medium coverage you can build this up a little bit I don't think you can build this up to a full full coverage but you can build it up for sure which I also didn't believe I thought you're not going to get much coverage from this but as you can see in my demo I did go back in and add a second layer of this with my hands and it definitely does build up the coverage quite a bit today I have this on with this next product and this is not new but it was new to me but I am now a huge huge fan and it's the MAC Studio Fix powder foundation or let's see Studio Fix powder plus foundation. So this is what I have on over the face and body. And I said this in my video and I still 
think this every time I've used these two together. This is so good. If you are wanting the finish of this, but you want to add just a little more coverage in certain places, this combo together is so good because this still kind of shines through. I don't go in and like heavily apply this all over my face. I just kind of use a big brush and add it in places where this doesn't give the amount of coverage that I want, which for me is like right here in my cheek area. Oh my gosh, so impressed with these and I am loving them. I have them both on my face today. Okay, let's talk about a new corrector that I just did a video on a few days ago and I've been playing around with this a little bit more. I did use it today and it's the Becca and Smash, well I guess it's Smashbox X Becca, the under eye brightening corrector. I did a video using this on myself that I'll link above for you if you haven't seen it, but they came out with new shades in this under eye tint or under eye corrector. And I got the shade medium, which is one of the new shades. And I'll swatch it for you. So there it is. As you can see, it's very orangey. I had the, or I still have it actually, the original Becca corrector in the fair light shade, which looks like this. And I did not like the color of this for me. It was way too light. It almost looked white on my under eyes sometimes. So you can see that's it right there. And that's the new medium shade. I like this so much more now that they expanded the shades. Now there are four shades. Thank goodness because the two they had before I feel like were two extremes. One was very, very light and the other was pretty dark. There wasn't really anything in between and now there are two shades in between. So there's fair light, there's medium, medium dark, and dark. This is very, very good corrector. I know a lot of people loved the original. If the colors worked for you, you probably did like the original, but for me, if the color is wrong, I'm just not going to like it, especially for a concealer or a corrector. This texture reminds me of, and this just came to me a few minutes ago, this reminds me of the Glossier Stretch Concealer. The consistency. If you've used that concealer, you probably will know it's very creamy. It is very moisturizing and emollient. I mean, it almost feels, almost has like an oily kind of consistency to it, but not in a bad way. It's just very, has a lot of slip to it. That's what this reminds me of. And something else I really like about this is it has those, it looks kind of pearlescent under your eye, which is good if you're worried about darkness, which I always am. As you can see, this shade is very, very orangey. The light shade is very, very light. I feel like they definitely could add one additional shade in between these two. I can use the medium, but it's definitely pretty dark on me. So you can get away with it, but you definitely have to put concealer on top if you're similar skin tone to me. But other than that, I like this a lot and I definitely recommend it. Let's talk about another complexion product. I don't have this one on my face today because I do have the MAC Face and Body on, but I did recently try the new Tower 28 Sunny Days Broad Spectrum SPF Tinted Sunscreen. So it's interesting on the bottle here, it says tinted sunscreen, but then I've seen on Sephora, they call it a tinted sunscreen foundation which is interesting because um, to me, this is SPF 30 and it is 12.6% uh, zinc oxide. So this is an all mineral tinted sunscreen essentially, but it does give you a decent amount of coverage for this type of product. I really, really like this. I think Tower 28 did a great job with this. I wear the shade 15 Melrose and as you can see, it's a pretty lightweight, kind of liquidy texture. 
but it blends in very, very beautifully. It doesn't feel heavy on your skin. It doesn't have that weird sunscreen smell that products like this can have sometimes. And it really does give decent coverage. I would say it can build up to a light medium coverage. You're not gonna get more than medium though, for sure. Uh, but I like this a lot. The one thing I will say that I don't know that I would consider a con, I just kind of want to point it out, is this, they say, is a natural finished product. I personally think this is much more of a luminous finish, not so much a natural finish. I guess maybe you could say it's more of a natural luminous finish, but to me it's very dewy. On your skin even if you set it with a little bit of powder on me it's still pretty dewy and I don't have oily skin I have I would say pretty normal skin but definitely more leaning dry than oily so that's something to keep in mind if you're wanting if you're afraid of it being too dewy I do think it's very dewy so you're gonna want to set this with some powder if you end up buying it but other than that I think this is a beautiful product and I will definitely continue to use it, but I did want to point that out about the finish. It's definitely, in my opinion, pretty dewy. So I would recommend it if you like that type of finish. I've tried one new concealer recently and it's the Pure Push Up 4-in-1 Sculpting Concealer. Y'all know me and my concealers. One thing I love about this is the packaging. So it has this button that you click and that's how the wand comes out. This is quickly becoming a new favorite concealer. I really, really like this. I'm reaching for this consistently, very consistently. I haven't really reached for anything as much as this since the one size butter silk concealer because that's probably like my all-time favorite right now but this is very good this reminds me of the Lancome concealer the new one the tint idol that everyone seems like is really liking I personally like this one a little bit better this one wears a little well a little bit better on me personally I think the coverage is about the same the finish is about the same. I would say they're both a true medium coverage. The one size is pretty, pretty full coverage, I would say. This one is a true medium, in my opinion, but it does dry down to a pretty natural finish. It's not super matte and it's not super dewy. It's right in between. I don't know why. I've, I've hardly heard anyone mention this at all here on YouTube, but... This is very good. I feel like this would also be good for someone with more mature skin because it is so thin. It's pretty hydrating under your eyes, but it does give coverage. Like I said, it reminds me of the Lancome. I just personally like my color in this a little bit better and I like how this wears under my eyes a little bit better. But this I really like and I do recommend. Okay, let's talk about a product that I've kind of gone back and forth with. I did not want to like this, but I do. It's the Dior Forever Skin Natural Bronzer in the shade 4. So this was definitely an impulsive purchase. I had no plans at all of buying this until I went in Sephora and I swatched it and immediately decided that I needed to have it. This is a beautiful bronzer. I have it on my skin or my face today. Also, the packaging is beautiful. It's this quilted kind of creamy beige packaging. 10 out of 10, love that. But I do not know how this is possible, but mine almost looks like in places it's starting to get hard pan already. Like, I don't know if you can see, like right here in this area, starting to kind of get hard pan and I really don't like it when products do that but I can fix that that's not an issue but I did want to point that out because this is brand new and it's already kind of got some hard pan on it and the other thing you guys the smell this smells just like the Dior foundations that floral pretty strong perfumey smell like to the point where I was applying this earlier with this brush 
And now this brush smells like that perfume. It's very, very strong. For that reason, I probably would not recommend this, to be honest. I think it's beautiful, but for the price and with the amount of beautiful bronzers I have that do not cost $50, I don't know that I can say you need this. It's beautiful if you want to spend some money on a bronzer. I don't think you'll be disappointed, but I don't know. I can't tell you that I think this is worth $50. It's nice, but not a necessity. But Dior, why do we need to make a bronzer smell like flowers? I don't understand. I mean, it smells good, but not for a bronzer. You know what I mean? So for this, I would say skip it. All right, let's talk about something that is $5.99, and I think you would all like it. You should go out and buy it, and it's the LA Girl Just Blushing Powder Blush, and this is the shade Just Natural. I bought this uh, randomly at Ulta one day because I saw Alexa Blake use it here on YouTube and I absolutely love this. This is maybe my favorite drugstore blush now that I own. That's what I have on my cheeks today for blush and this is so good, you guys. And these are almost always on some kind of sale at Ulta. So right now, I think when I looked... They're like $4.29 or something like that. They're normally $5.99, but this is such a pretty blush. I think these come in a few more colors. I actually want to get another one because I really like it, but this color in Just Natural is a very neutral, pretty blush. I think this is perfect because it goes with everything. It's not too peach. It's not too pink. It's not too brown. It, it's just really pretty. I think you'll love this. So if you are in Ulta or anywhere where you see these from LA Girl, I highly recommend it. This is so good. Okay, let's move on to a new brow product. Oh, you guys, okay, I bought the ColourPop. What is this called? The Feather Effect Styling Brow Wax in the shade Clear. You may have seen me use this in a trying new makeup video I did a few weeks ago. And I said in that video that it's very similar to the Patrick Ta Brow Wax, which is my absolute favorite brow product of all time. <sighs> you guys, the difference in these two, so this is the Patrick Ta one that I'm always using. This is the ColourPop. The look you get, almost identical. I have the ColourPop one in my brows today. The difference in these two products is the hold that you get. The hold with the Patrick Ta is better than the ColourPop one. And I'm sorry to say that because I was hoping I was going to like the ColourPop one as much, if not more, than the Patrick Ta one. And I do like it. I think if you're not super worried about a strong hold with your brows and having them up all day, no touching, no rebrushing, nothing. You'll like this because it gives you a very similar look to this. But this, when you use this in your brows, they are not going anywhere. I'm telling you, they will stay in the position that you brush them up into, which is what I love about it. I'm not surprised by this difference in the hold, really, now that I've used them both because the ColourPop Brow Wax, when you spray it with water or a setting spray or whatever and you get your spoolie and start to build up your product this wax emulsifies but it turns to a very very thin paste like it's almost not even a paste it's kind of a gel kind of feel whereas the Patrick Ta one when you add a setting spray to this this is like a paste so this is just a thicker product, which is why it holds your brows a little bit better. But this one is good, but I can't say it's as good as this. I'm sorry, I am still ride or die for the Patrick Top. But I do think ColourPop is very good. If you don't wanna spend the money, I would recommend this, but I don't think it's as good as this one. And one final thing, let's talk about a new setting spray and this is the Morphe Continuous Setting Mist. I had no plans to buy this. I just picked it up on a whim really when I bought a lot of these things that I bought at Ulta 
And I got this because so many people are always talking about how great this is and they love it and it's a staple in a lot of makeup artist kits that I follow on Instagram and I just never tried it. So I got it and I love this. This may be my new favorite setting spray. I love the mister. It's the it's called the continuous setting mist for a reason. When you press the button, the mist just continues to come out until you stop pressing the button. You don't have to keep pressing down over and over like you do with a lot of setting sprays. It has a smell, but for some reason I love the smell of this. The smell does not bother me. And normally I'm someone that I like to stay away from products with a ton of fragrance in them just because I have more sensitive skin and I like to use fragrance free things as much as I can but for some reason with that mist I really like it and I do think it does kind of help my makeup last throughout the day. I don't know that it's as good in terms of longevity with your makeup as like the Urban Decay All Nighter. That one is my go-to for anytime I need my makeup to last for a long period of time. But just overall, for every day for a setting spray, I really like this and definitely recommend it. And that is gonna be it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this speed reviews video. I tried not to talk too much about each thing, but I'm a very quiet person in day-to-day -day life. But when I talk about makeup, I can just talk and talk and talk and talk and talk. And this is supposed to be a quick video, but anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and make sure to give it a thumbs up if you liked it. I hope you'll subscribe if you have not already. I am, I don't think I've said this in a video, but my goal for myself, I don't know if it's going to happen or not, but I really want to hit 5,000 subscribers by the end of this year. That's my goal for myself. So if you enjoy my videos, please share them with anyone that you think might like them, your friends, your family, co-workers, whoever that you think might like my videos, please share them. It means so much to me. Um, but yeah, that's my goal for myself. Also make sure you're following me on Instagram at simply.blair and TikTok simply.blair01. I'll see you guys next time. Remember, simply be you. Bye.